Welcome to Unscripted Coding. Today we're going to talk very briefly about paywalls. Take this one for example. Paywalls are just the pop-ups or the barriers to prevent you from continuing on a website, reading more articles, accessing features, unless you sign up, you enter your credit card, you make a payment, some sort of call to action here. And Oftentimes, you know, you get a sample of the website. So, uh, for example, here you might be able to read one, two, three free articles and then the dreaded paywall comes up. And what we're going to do is show you very quickly how there are some very poorly created paywalls and in their defense, why you might want to build it this way. So let's look very quickly here as web developers, as software developers, you know, we can just take a look right here and inspect the website. And we're going to see that this one, there's a teaser and all of this text is written, but once it stops here, there's no more text for us to reveal. So simply put, the rest of the article is just not on the page. And that makes it very hard for us to try and retrieve more data to try and get anything out of it. Uh, it might be possible, it might not be. If you take a look at this page, on the other hand, you're going to see this pop up, but very the back is very much a realistic page. And so that tips off to me that there is something going on in the back here in which we can actually still recreate or view the data. If you try and refresh a page, you'll see that you, you get to see the live page and then it blurs and, and removes the content and, and puts up this pop-up. And so if we inspect the page here, I should zoom in just a little bit, move the console here, um, and take a look. We are going to see, I think, let me zoom out a bit. We're going to see that we can remove the pop-up, that's always possible. And so I think it's this MDC dialog container. I think I might take out the whole parent, see what we see. So we removed that uh, element and you can see already that we can start clicking the links possibly. So, yep, we can actually click into it, but there's still some sort of overlay. And if we take a look here and just inspect that will tip us off to the parent. Um, and this looks like the biggest parent. And you'll see over here that there is a filter on the page. And if we disable it, we see the whole page. And there's something else being done here that locks us out. So I'm trying to take a very quick look here at each of the parent elements. And here you'll see the overflow is now hidden. That's why there's no scroll bar. But if I take this out, suddenly we have the scroll bar back and the website is functional until we, we go to the next page where this pop-up is cropping up. Once again, we, we don't have the ability to do the same thing here. So what I wanted to do, very fun, is to show you guys how quickly it is to write something that you can effectively get rid of this. So just recreating the steps here, we're going to inspect and we're going to go up to the parent. And I think this was the element we uh, saw. So I am going to copy this div go into ChatGPT and say, can you write some JavaScript code that will first remove this element from the page? And so ChatGPT is going to do something where um, we're going to be able to remove that element. And so if I run this in console and paste it, it did the first step for us. 
Now that next piece was this one right here. Nope, uh, right in the body, this overflow. So actually, I think what we're going to do is remove these two classes. Can you add to the code and remove these two classes from the body element? And just to make it doubly clear, I'm going to edit as HTML, copy this piece, and put it over here. Let me zoom in a bit so we can see the code a bit better. Okay, so I'm going to copy this right here. We'll just refresh and we'll go, mm -hmm, there we go. And you can see next piece right here. That was pretty good. Um, and I think we have to go somewhere else to see that blur. Here we go. So we'll go into a console. Oh, look at that. I think that might just be it. Why is that? Okay, uh, just one second. I find this very strange. Uh, here's the blur. Ah, okay. We removed force dialogue and the scroll lock, which is required to have the blur. So the moment we removed those two classes, everything becomes unlocked. So now we can just run console on the side at all times and start browsing this website. So I want to take a look at, um, let's, let's just take a look at some stock option agreements. And as soon as we get locked, we can run this and I suppose we can take this one step further. We can use Grease Monkey to have it run automatically. We might be able to create our own extension, something that will keep this going very uh, more automatically. But um, the point of this is that this is a really simple type of paywall that is different from the one we see at law360.com. Um, this one is just something happening on the front end. So the back end has already served the content to you. There's something from the front end, the UI that prevents you from watching it. And you might wonder why you would do this. And I just built a site very recently where I put in a uh, paywall that's like this one. It is front end based. And in theory, you could do the same thing on my website. The question is why you would want to do this. Well, for one, it is not likely very many people are going to be inspecting and, and trying to remove your paywall this way. Uh, not everyone is a web developer. Not everyone has the time or the understanding to do so. So you're losing you know, let's say one in a hundred, one in a thousand users might have the capability to do this. And then among them, how many of them would have been paying subscribers? How many of them are, are worth your time, uh, essentially? So front end makes it very simple. If you want to build something like this, Law360, um, the idea is pretty simple. The The Backend is just not serving content until you're logged in. So you have to have a login system. You have to have checks um, between your front end and your back end. And the sophistication for that just makes it much harder. Um, you're, you're going to need a fairly sophisticated website. So in my example, I don't even have so for my own personal website, I don't even have an option for you to sign up, to have an account, to have these things. And so is it worth it to spend the time and the effort to, to build up a, a backend to keep track of the users to then serve content depending on whether they're logged in, whether they've paid? Slippery slope. But um, 
I think, uh, depending on what you're doing, it is very worthwhile. So Law360 um, is a very expensive service, so they definitely want to keep this behind a paywall. Whereas sometimes for, I think, Law Insider as a startup, it's just quicker, faster, easier, cheaper to do so. And so when you start implementing paywalls, I wouldn't be so hung up on trying to do everything perfectly and everything right and tight because, you know, we can laugh at how quickly uh, I got past this paywall and started using the site again. But to be fair, if you want to launch a product, you don't necessarily have to make it perfect all the way around. You just have to make it enough of a deterrence for many people. And so, for example, I might just find it kind of annoying to um, to have to paste this code every single time. And if the pricing works out, um, I might be compelled to just pay it instead as well. Anyways, I hope that was uh, interesting and useful. Um, just as you build websites, you got to think about security. You got to think about how you want to encourage your users to, to pay, to sign up, to do the things you want, but you also want to juggle how much effort, how much time, how difficult it is to implement. So I hope you found that helpful. And just I'm going to end it on this screen where you can see the code. And we will see you next week with another episode of Unscripted Coding. Thanks for watching. Bye.